California is about to flood an entire valley, but not as you might think. The site's reservoir is set to hold an astonishing 1.85 billion cubic meters of water, enough to supply millions of people for a year. With a staggering $4 billion price tag and a completion date set for 2032, it's one of California's biggest water projects. But why is it needed? Let's find out. The site's reservoir is said to be built in a naturally occurring valley near Maxwell, California, stretching 21 kilometers from north to south and 6.4 kilometers from east to west. To create this reservoir, an entire valley will be intentionally flooded, submerging the land under 1.85 billion cubic meters of water, enough to supply millions of people for an entire year. It will become the eighth largest reservoir in the state, providing a critical new source of water for both farming and city use. But how will it tackle the water challenges California faces? California has been dealing with severe water shortages for decades. Droughts are becoming longer and more frequent, with particularly devastating periods from 2011 to 2017 and again in recent years. The state's existing water systems, relying on traditional reservoirs, are struggling to keep up with the rising demand, especially as climate change disrupts weather patterns. And that's not all. Water distribution has become a heated issue, with intense competition between farmers, urban areas, and environmental groups. So what happens when there's not enough water to go around? See, the state relies heavily on snowmelt from the Sierra Nevada, but as temperatures climb, less snow builds up, leading to a significant reduction in water supply during critical summer months. Urban areas, agriculture, and ecosystems are all scrambling to secure what's left. The site's reservoir is designed to address these issues by capturing extra water during wet periods and storing it for use in drier times, acting as a buffer between future water shortages. It promises a more reliable water supply, helping regulate salt levels in the Sacramento-San Juan Keen Delta and supporting ongoing environmental conservation efforts. The site's reservoir project may sound like a modern solution to California's water issues, but it actually goes back to the 1950s. So why has it taken this long for this idea to finally move forward? Well, over the years, various factors, including worsening droughts, have made long-form water storage a must. As California's water problems grew more serious, the push for long-term solutions grew stronger. See, between 1996 and 2014, studies costing $50 million were carried out to assess the possibility of the site's reservoir, looking at everything from its location to its environmental impact. These early investigations laid the foundation for a project that could change how California manages water. But it wasn't until 2018 that real progress began. The project secured significant funding, including $875 million from California's Proposition one water bond and $449 million from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Then in 2021, the California Water Commission gave the project the go-ahead saying it was possible. But it didn't stop there. In 2022, Governor Gavin Newsom's infrastructure plan pushed the project forward speeding up the process and cutting down delays. By 2023, the project passed another major milestone, approval under SB 149, a law designed to speed up construction and avoid legal issues. The project is now set to begin construction in 2026, with operations expected to start by the end of 2032. But how exactly do you build something on this scale? Building the site's reservoir isn't as simple as just filling a big hole with water. It's a complex multi-step process that brings together new technology with a strong understanding of the natural environment. To start, the project involves the construction of two major dams, Sites Dam and Golden Gate Dam, alongside nine smaller dams and dikes. Together, these structures will keep the water confined to the valley, forming a reservoir that will be 79 meters deep and cover up to 56 square kilometers. Once complete, it'll become a crucial storage source for California's ever-growing water needs. But how will all this water get there? Water will be diverted from the Sacramento River using an extensive network of existing infrastructure with several canals and pipelines undergoing big upgrades. 
Among these upgrades is a 1,230-meter tunnel that will connect the reservoir to the Tahama Calusa and Glen Calusa canals. This tunnel will ensure the smooth transfer of water, contributing to the overall efficiency of the system, and with a combined capacity of about 118 cubic meters per second, this is no small task. Of course, environmental concerns are a key part of the construction process. Protecting aquatic life is a key priority, so advanced Fish screening technologies will be used at pumping stations. This ensures that water is only withdrawn during high flow periods, minimizing any harm to the ecosystems. Furthermore, sediment management plans are being carefully developed to prevent contamination of downstream areas. Once completed, the site's reservoir will work alongside other big water systems like Shasta Lake and Lake Oroville, making the most of California's water resources. During droughts, the water stored in the reservoir can be released to support farming, urban water supply, and environmental needs, giving the state much-needed flexibility in tough times. Building these dams will require millions of cubic yards of concrete and a lot of digging, but the energy needed to pump water uphill won't just come from traditional power sources, it will also rely on water-powered energy and a dedicated solar setup, making this a green and energy-efficient project. And if that's not impressive enough, the project will include recreational air areas for boating, fishing, and camping. Not only will these areas boost the local economy, but they'll also offer Californians a new outdoor place to explore. So where will the water from the site's reservoir come from and how will it get there? Well, the primary source will be the Sacramento River, which will be tapped during high flow periods, typically from December to March. Redirection points like the Red Bluff pumping plant and the Hamilton City pump station will send water into existing canals and pipelines. Once captured, water will flow through the Tahama Calusa Canal and the Glen Calusa Irrigation District Canal before being pumped into the site's reservoir via a series of tunnels and pipelines. These systems will be equipped with state-of-the-art fish screens and flow monitoring systems to minimize environmental impact while meeting st strict legal standards. But filling the reservoir is not an instant process. Sites only receive water during surplus flow periods in the Sacramento River when there is extra water available. On average, it'll take five to seven years to fill the reservoir under typical conditions based on 82 years of hydrology data. However, in wet years like 26 to 2017, it could take just one year, while in dry years, it could take up to 10 years. Despite dry years, there are still opportunities to fill the reservoir, though they are more limited. Once the water is stored, it'll be managed carefully and released during critical drought periods. This ensures that agricultural irrigation, urban water supply, and environmental needs are met. The site's reservoir will be able to adapt to changing conditions, ensuring that California's water future is secure, even in the face of climate change. It's not just about storing water, it's about managing it wisely for the future. But how will it actually change the game for the state's water management? Agriculture, which consumes the largest share of water, stands to gain reliable irrigation supplies, ensuring farmers can thrive even during dry years. Urban areas, particularly those in Southern California and the Bay Area will finally have a dependable water source during droughts, easing the strain on existing reservoirs that have long been under pressure. But that's not all. The environmental advantages could be just as transformative. By dedicating water to habitat restoration, the site's reservoir aims to protect endangered species like the Delta smelt and Chinook salmon. By preserving cold water pools in upstream reservoirs and improving water flows into the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta, this project could make a significant difference in keeping these species alive. And let's not forget about the traveling birds. This reservoir is sent to improve wetland habitats along the Pacific Flyway, providing crucial support to their populations. So what does this all mean for the state's future? Well, the site's reservoir's planned operation will bring flexibility to California's water system, making it adaptable to the growing challenges of climate change. During wet years, it will capture excess water that would otherwise flow into the ocean. During dry years, it'll release stored water to support agricultural, municipal, and environmental needs. In essence, it's like having a backup plan for California's water future. 
But of course, there are challenges to face. Critics are worried that taking water from the Sacramento River could hurt fish populations, and the loss of natural areas might harm ecosystems. Environmental groups are concerned about possible damage from the construction of multiple dams and changes to the land. Also, the high cost of building and potential delays due to legal issues could threaten the project's success. Despite these problems, Sites Reservoir remains an important solution to California's water shortage, helping manage water for the future. Hey, if you found this breakdown of the Sites Reservoir project fascinating, and if you're curious about other groundbreaking water projects, check out our video on why is Pakistan building a $14 billion giant barrier? Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss our next upload.